Chapter Nine of By What Authority by Robert Hugh Benson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Village Justice. The village had never known such an awakening as on the morning that followed Sir Nicholas' arrest. Before seven o'clock, every house knew it, and children ran half dressed to the outlying hamlets to tell the story very little work was done that day for the estate was disorganized and the men had little heart for work and there were groups all day on the green which formed and reformed and drifted here and there and discussed and sifted the evidence it was soon known that the rectory household had had a foremost hand in the affair the groom who had been present at the actual departure of the prisoners had told the story of the black figure that ran out of the door and of what was cried at the old man's knee and how he had not moved nor spoken in answer and thomas the rectory boy was stopped as he went across the green in the evening and threatened and encouraged until he told of the stroke on the church bell and the rectory key and the little company that had sat all the afternoon in the kitchen over their ale he told too how a couple of hours ago he had been sent across with a note to lady maxwell and that it had been returned immediately unopened so as night fell indignation had begun to smoulder fiercely against the minister who had not been seen all day and after dark had fallen the name judas was cried in at the rectory door half a dozen times and a stone or two from the direction of the churchyard had crashed on the tiles of the house mr norris had been up all day at the hall but he was the only visitor admitted all day long the gatehouse was kept closed and the same message was given to the few horsemen and carriages that came to inquire after the truth of the report from the catholic houses round to the effect that it was true that sir nicholas and a friend had been taken off to london by the justice from east grinstead and that lady maxwell begged the prayers of her friends for her husband's safe return anthony had ridden off early with a servant at his father's wish to follow sir nicholas and learn any news of him that was possible to do him any service he was able and to return or send a message the next day down to great keynes and early in the afternoon he returned with the information that sir nicholas was at the marshalsea that he was well and happy that he sent his wife his dear love and that she should have a letter from him before nightfall he rode straight to the hall with the news full of chastened delight at his official importance just pausing to tell a group that was gathered on the green that all was well so far and was shown up to lady maxwell's own parlour where he found her very quiet and self-controlled and extremely grateful for his kindness and riding up to london and back on her account anthony explained too that he had been able to get sir nicholas one or two comforts that the prison did not provide a pillow and an extra coverlet and some fruit and he left her full of gratitude his father had been up to see the ladies two or three times and in spite of the difference in religion had prayed with them and talked a little and lady maxwell had asked that isabel might come up to supper and spend the evening mr norris promised to send her up and then added i am a little anxious lady maxwell lest the people may show their anger against the rector or his wife about what has happened lady maxwell looked startled they have been speaking of it all day long he said they know everything and it seems the rector is not so much to blame as his wife it was she who sent for the magistrate and gave him the key and arranged it all he was only brought into it too late to interfere or refuse have you seen him asked the old lady i have been both days he said but he will not see me he is in his study locked in i may have treated him harshly she said i would not open his note but at least he consented to help them against his friend 
and her old eyes filled with tears. "'I fear that is so,' said the other sadly. "'But speak to the people,' she said. "'I think they love my husband, and would do nothing to grieve us. Tell them that nothing would pain either of us more than that any should suffer for this. Tell them they must do nothing but be patient and pray. There was a group still on the green near the pond as Isabel came up to supper that evening about six o'clock. Her father, who had given Lady Maxwell's message to the people an hour or two before, had asked her to go that way and send down a message to him immediately if there seemed to be any disturbance or threatening of it. But the men were very quiet. Mr. Musgrave was there, she saw, sitting with his pipe on the stalks, and Piers, the young Irish bailiff, was standing near. They were all silent as the girl came up and saluted her respectfully as usual, and she saw no signs of any dangerous element. There were one or two older women with the men, and others were standing at their open doors on all sides as she went